Good morning. It's Saturday morning and the um, excited live that I've been telling you guys about is here today. Um, I will have a naturopathic naturopath doctor with me today. His name is Dr. Michael Davidson and I am so excited. It's my first time interviewing a physician and definitely something close to my heart because I believe that taking care of our health at the root is the way to go. Preventive care is the way to go. Using plants um, that were created by God for our bodies is the way to go. And this man knows it all. So I am not going to chat here much longer. I'm just going to dive in. I'm going to accept. Um, actually, uh, yep. And introduce you guys and dive into a bunch of things. Hopefully we'll all learn together. There it is. Cool. Hi. Hi, Dr. Davidson. Hi. It's great to uh, thank you for inviting me. It's great good to be with you. You're welcome. Thank you for accepting the invite. I'm so excited. I'm like all those questions like my parents ask me because I'm their go to for health because I know a little bit. And then things we hear all the time, maybe myths. I would love to just like hear from a professional, um, especially somebody that practices natural medicine, like, like just, just like break it down for us, lay down the groundwork. Um, so I'm stoked to, to dive into that with you today. Um, thank you for taking the time. <laughs> It's my pleasure. <laughs> All right. So to introduce to you guys, this is Dr. Michael Davidson. He practices um, uh, natural medicine in California. Um, he's a doctor of pharmacy, board certified pharmacotherapy specialist, clinical nutri nutritionist, and phytotherapist, which is an evidence-based herbal therapist. Um, is it okay to call you a naturopathic doctor? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's some differences between those, but a naturopath is, yeah, it's very similar. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. For the, for the regular mom like me and maybe most of us watching here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before we dive in, just for legal purposes, we need to um, say a little disclaimer because obviously the information that we're going to talk about here today um, that's being presented has not been reviewed by the FDA, should not be relied upon for any diagnostic treatment or diagnostics or treatment purposes. This information is not intended to be um, patient education. Sorry, this information is not intended to be patient education, does not create any patient health care provider relationship and should not be used as a substitute for, for professional medical advice. Please come please consult your healthcare provider before making any medical decisions and for guidance of any specific medical conditions. Phew. Okay. <laughs> That's out of the way. <laughs> All right. So can you please share with us, um, maybe for those watching that don't know yet, um, what is the difference between like natural medicine and like the Western more modern approach to medicine? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, something that, um, I address right away. Um, when uh, even an, as an exp uh, explanation, when someone first um, wants to um, consult with me, um, because it's really important to understand. Uh, so in the conventional Western medical approach, um, basically, um, first you would, you would uh, you, okay, when you go to see your doctor, um, you know, you, so the doctor would be, First of all, having you know just like five or ten minutes to spend with you, and he would be focused on assessing any symptoms um, and then trying to figure out a diagnosis. Um, but um, you know, even if the correct diagnosis is made, um, the the therapy that would result from that would be very superficial. It would only uh, basically address the symptoms and um, trying to alleviate the symptoms, manage them, or cover them up but not actually uh, doing anything about um, the underlying uh, factors which cause that, uh, cause those symptoms. Because symptoms, they're just an indicator of something going wrong in the body. And we have to understand um, and, tr and re really treat them as such. It, it, just because you block the symptoms does not mean you block um, or you correct what's wrong in the body. Um, it's just like, uh, you know, it's like this black box and you tap on it, you don't know what's going on inside. And then you hear a sound, that's a symptom. Um, so 
And just because you suppress the sound doesn't mean, you know, you figured out or you, you're, yeah. So it, it's basically, um, uh, they're basically signs of something wrong. And uh, what happens is they, they will then prescribe, you know, often prescribe medication, for example, to treat those symptoms. Like, like uh, let's, let's say in the case of uh, uh, heartburn, right? You'll get an, uh, some kind of acid suppressing medication, um, which, which blocks that symptom, but it doesn't um, actually do anything about what's causing that heartburn. Uh, and then the patient feels better. Um, they may even forget there was a problem to begin with because the symptom is now blocked. But actually, um, the underlying factors that cause that continue to, to get worse um, because uh, nothing is being down about them. Um, and you know, so, so uh, the underlying factors that cause that are, you know, uh, they have to do with uh, the foods that we eat. They have to do with healthy digestion, digestive system. Um, they have to do with uh, nutrient status, uh, lifestyle, and those are never addressed. So instead, the patient, uh, the patient is just prescribed some medication. He forgets about the symptoms. Uh, meanwhile, those problems build up and they can lead to all sorts of uh, down the line, you know, uh, the body can only take so much punishment. So like gastrointestinal inflammation. Now the drugs themselves also contribute to the problem because they have adverse effects. So you take those acid suppressing medication for a long time, for example, and you can get increased risk of uh, infection and food poisoning and bone fragility and fractures um, and nutrient deficiency and the list goes on and on and on. Um, so you see it's uh, basically, um, it's, a, it's a big problem. And then uh, when it comes to actually correcting those underlying factors, the, the, the uh, Western medical uh, doctors, they are not trained to do that. Um, they, they are trained well sometimes in diagnosis, like, um, you know, what specific condition do you have? But as far as how to, how to correct it, no, because the top 10 causes of morbidity and mortality in the U.S., they're all chronic conditions that cannot be corrected for the most part with drugs. They can be managed, their symptoms may be managed, but... Um, the only way they can actually be corrected or even reversed in some cases is um, through healthy lifestyle changes, through diet. Um, and unfortunately, the, the, the doctors in Western medicine, they don't get any, uh, really any education in nutrition, um, you know, and uh, in uh, lifestyle medicine, in preventive medicine. So it's a huge problem. And you might be asking why that is, but it all has to do with reimbursement, money. So if you follow the money, you'll figure out the reason for most things. Um, mm -hmm. Now, in contrast, uh, in integrative medical uh, approaches, such as what I do, um, so you you actually try to understand what's causing uh, what's causing these symptoms, what could be the root problems. In the case of the heartburn that I mentioned, um, it it's likely often consumption of fat, which is uh, found in animal type foods, like in chicken, fish, meat, and dairy, and uh, other things like that. Um, it relaxes the lower esophageal sphincter, which allows stomach acid to go back up into the esophagus. Um, so just by eliminating that, you can already do, um, uh, you know, you can already make a significant improvement. Um, there's also, um, there's also, of course, uh, 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 the type of diet you eat will have a dramatic effect. When you, how late you eat, for example, how much you eat will have a, will have an effect. Um, there's, uh, you know, like herbs I use, for example, to improve digestion, protect the stomach lining. Um, and in contrast to medication, they don't have those adverse effects. They don't suppress symptoms. And in instead, they support and uh, nurture and uh, promote proper function and structure of the tissues and glands involved in digestion. Um, so it's a whole different approach. Um, a caveat is that... Um, you can't spend five to 10 minutes with your patient. Um, you know, the, the patient has to realize they're gonna have to do a lot of work um, because they have to uh, be willing to, to uh, change their lifestyle. Um, I mean, some people, you know, and that's a, a gamut of, some people are not really willing to change their diet all that much. I mean, that's okay. They can still get some benefit even, even just by using, for example, medicinal herbs or by uh, re reducing their like last, um, how late they eat, for example. Um, so everyone's willing to go, you know, uh, have, has a different kind of uh, uh, tolerance, but it, it really, if they wanna see the best results, they have to be willing, you know, to change their, their lifestyle. Um, and uh, really it's up to, you know, it's up to them uh, to understand the importance of this because it's really their health. Um, and, um, 
so uh, yeah, so you know, it takes a lot of work from the practitioner. So you know, I, I have to spend uh, probably an hour trying to um, you know understand what 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 are the underlying factors causing this really, uh, and and the patient has to do some work as well, you know, in trying to um, ch change some, some habits, perhaps, um, you know, uh, start shopping on the periphery of the, <laughs> of the grocery store, for example, yeah, for sure. and recipes, you know, things like how, how to make healthy food taste good is, yeah, it, so there's work involved in both the doctor and the patient. It's a, it's not like so much like I give orders and you do it. It's, it's a real, it's a joint uh, effort, um, more like, a, you know, a coach and a, and a yeah, so but the results, um, if you if you actually are willing to do all these things and integrate lifestyle therapies, um, you know, like the nutrition and, and uh, uh, for example, um, and herbs and uh, exercise and sleep hygiene, the results will be synergistically better and can be incredible. And that's what my patients, you know, have told me. Um, I can really change your life. Yeah. Yeah, well, we live in such a um, a day and age of instant gratification that this is an option that most people don't even look at because so often it's so much easier and faster and not as much work to just band-aid the symptom but not really understand what the root cause is and then over time have more and more side effects, so-called, or the, the root will not be treated. So the natural approach to medicine is definitely super intriguing to me. And I feel like it's like such a well that just you can just keep digging and there's so much goodness in it. Um, but thanks for sharing that. <clears throat> and actually to stem off of that, if you could quickly address like um, there's a myth out there that um, is very common that natural medicine is actually like the natural approach is a lot more expensive or cost will cost somebody a lot more than than the opposite. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is true that a lot of natural medicine practices they're um, they're uh, out of pocket pay, so they don't accept insurance. As some do, um, but um, uh, re when you really think about it, if you if you're if you're preventing, um, so if you're actually able to prevent, for example, a heart attack, right? And you have to pay someone for, for a consultation, let's say $300. Uh, as a result of that consultation, you know, they, they don't get a heart attack. Um, is that a good deal or no? Because, um, well, you know, first of all, open heart surgery costs many thousands of dollars. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, which, you know, a, a day in the hospital costs much more than that. But, it, but yeah. just beyond that, um, the surgery will not solve the problem. In fact, it creates more risks down the line. Um, so not only are you lo losing more money, right? Because you didn't, uh, you didn't think it was important to prevent, prevent that, um, that chronic condition from progressing, um, but your, your health is still gonna deteriorate. So it's much better to, to, to pay in advance to prevent a, uh, you know, a little bit in advance to prevent a whole lot of uh, expenses and, uh, just uh, deleterious health consequences down the road. Um, you're actually saving a whole lot of money. Um, and uh, whether it's prevention or uh, just uh, um, with, with, these, with these integrator approaches, you can, uh, you know, just arrest the development, the further progression of these diseases. In some cases, you can reverse them. Um, of course, prevention is always uh, more effective. Um, the, the saying is true that a, you know an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, you, you have to think of it more like an investment in your health um, and an investment in finances as well. Because, uh, like I said, you're going to be paying for it one way or another. You're going to be taking, you're going to be uh, you know either at the hospital, either taking drugs from pharmaceutical companies or or taking drugs from medicinal plants and from your food, which are phytochemicals naturally found in your food. Um, so, so, you know, paying a few hundred dollars for a consultation, um, yeah, it's, when you really think about it, it's a great deal. And it's something that you cannot actually, you can, you cannot afford not to do. <laughs> um, if you, you know, because, yeah, if you really want to preserve, maintain and optimize your health, um, yeah. yeah. It's definitely, I think, a, like a mindset shift. If this is something that like you're watching and kind of struggling with um, agreeing with at this point of your life, 
um, just really surround yourself with people that are more um, health oriented rather than just a Band-Aid oriented. And just like you said, you're going to pay for it either way, either now, even not only seeing like a naturopathic doctor, but also just, you know, people say, you know, shopping or eating healthier is a lot more expensive than not. But truly, it's not. If you really, you can really figure out how to do it correctly, number one. And number two, is it is that, you know, what's more valuable to you? That or having the health concerns and the stress dealing with it, and then obviously more expenses trying to solve it later. So um, it is a mindset shift, and there's so much to learn. Yeah, um, exactly. And I was going to add that um, right. there, there are economical ways to eat healthy, you know, even uh, eating a whole food plant-based diet with commercially grown produce is much healthier than eating a standard American diet, you know, or, or an omnivorous diet. Um, so, uh, and there's, there's plant foods uh, that are very inexpensive, like uh, broccoli seeds and purple cabbage and uh, things like that. Uh, people just, for the most part, uh, don't seem to know how to incorporate into their diets. Um, but it, I mean, it's very straightforward. It doesn't take a, long, a lot of time to learn. For example, I, I like to eat cabbage raw, you know, that's, <laughs> and I really like that. Now, most people, maybe some people won't, won't like that, but they just need to find recipes in which um, they will, you know, like the taste. So it's yeah. a matter of learning, renewing the mind, just like, um, yes. just like in uh, <laughs> with the Bible as well, um, learning, uh, getting to know God. It's, it's also a mind renewal in understanding how to keep yourself healthy. Yeah. yeah. Start with some Pinterest boards of plant-based food or healthier food. <laughs> That's really inspiring to me <laughs> to give me ideas of what to cook. Um, so I know like with being a wellness advocate, I know that my lifestyle and the daily choices that I make every day, they are the compound effect to how I overall will feel. So things like nutrition, um, exercise, sleep, and stress management, and my toxic load in my body, all of those compound into really how my cellular health is and how overall I feel. So if we could just um, dive into each one, and I actually intermix like some questions that we've got when I put out the question box um, announcing that we'll do this live from people that had questions. And so I intermixed them within these topics, and we'll just kind of go through them and um, address them so then they can have the answer, but then I'm curious as well. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Perfect. So the first one and the foundation um, is nutrition. So could you, like, obviously we know that eating healthier is better for us, right? But one um, very important thing that I learned is that I have to take supplements. I thought that I was always this healthy young mom, yet I was always um, under... I didn't have the enough energy. I always had mind fog and just total like those two. I wanted my naps and I did not understand that I was actually so depleted of nutrients after carrying children um, that when I did try and be consistent with certain, you know, the supplements that I take, I saw a huge difference. And now I'm this huge believer in taking supplements, the right kind of supplements. But can you um, tell us like, is there such a thing, like one of the myths that I hear and people asking me all the time, is there such a thing as taking too many supplements? Um, yeah, sure there is. Uh, and uh, the thing is, uh, okay, so you have to understand that uh, supplements in the U.S., uh, this is a, they're not regulated by any regulatory agency. So um, it presents quite an issue because um, when you look at the studies that have been done, a lot, a lot of supplements, um, uh, when you look at what's what's listed on the label versus what's actually in the supplement, a lot of times those those things don't match. Um, so it's unfortunate because uh, you know it's again it goes back to like companies are not willing to. Uh, a lot of times there, there's huge huge numbers of supplement companies, and uh, it's not possible for uh, to test all of them. So um, yeah, I mean. The, the, when, when they actually test a lot of these supplements, they don't contain what they say they contain, or sometimes there's even adulterants, contaminants. So for that reason, um, uh, so, you know, even, so even if you know, like, for example, that some kind of supplement is, is what you need is beneficial in certain health condition, um, you don't, it's another question of whether that, uh, that 
product or substance is contained in the specific supplement you're looking for. Um, and that's why uh, when, I, uh, when I use supplements, basically, um, I, I, have, I use companies that uh, first uh, have uh, a good QA uh, program, quality assurance. Um, uh, they sell largely to, well, they sell only to healthcare professionals. Um, and uh, now I, I use others as well, but um, I do um, I do try to uh, use um, um, a third party resource which laboratory tests um, these supplements like prior to recommending them. Um, it is, I, I would say, um, more of a concern with some things than it is with others. For example, when it comes to like a simple vitamin, like a single vitamin, like vitamin D, for example, it's not as much of a concern because there's not many that many things to, to uh, kind of, uh, uh, to, uh, there's not as many things to worry about. Um, so uh, we're versus like a multivitamin or a herbal product. There's not, not just one ingredient, there's uh, you know, thousands of components in an herb and um, the exact chemistry of those components can have an influence on, on its therapeutic effect. So there's a lot of, um, yeah, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in the manufacturing process by the time that final product is produced, you know, in the capsule or, or tablet. Um, so, yeah, so it varies. So you have to have expertise basically in, in supplements um, and how, how they can be tested and, you know, uh, it, to even begin to kind of, uh, uh, yeah, to, I mean, that's, that's what's recommended to, um, uh, to find uh, supplements that would be helpful. But another, another thing uh, I would say is that um, a lot of things, um, so uh, most of the, our nutrients um, that are necessary for health, we can actually obtain through a healthy diet. And I do recommend we do it that way. That's the most, the best way to get them because when you isolate nutrients out of their natural environment, a lot of times you can have effects that are actually uh, even harmful. Um, but it, it, again, it's specific for the nutrients. So uh, for example, when you, you know, get vitamin C from something like broccoli, it's very different from getting, eating vitamin C tablets. Vitamin C tablets in high doses can even lead to, you know, over like a thousand milligrams when you're taking them long term, they can lead to, for example, cataracts, increased risk of kidney stones, things like that. Um, yeah. But you're not going to get too much vitamin C from eating oranges, just because, um, Again, uh, the dosages there are completely different. They're also complex with many other nutrients that, um, that enhance their effects. Uh, and also, um, you know, so you can say the same thing for like vitamin A. There was a study where they gave vitamin uh, A with, to smokers and actually uh, increased their risk of lung cancer and wow. uh, effects. Um, because again, it's an isolated uh, vitamin versus something like uh, uh, carrots, you know, or a whole food containing that vitamin is completely different and it would have beneficial effects um, as the studies show. Um, but, uh, but I do recommend people take um, vitamins that are not, are hard to obtain from food or are not found in food, uh, where food is not a reliable source of those vitamins and that, are, that have a lot of clinical evidence behind um, their, their helpfulness. So it, it's, you know, it's hard to generalize. It's very it's very specific, and I do have a list of generally recommended, um, for example, supplements for general health. I have a list for immune health, you know, that, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's uh, um, so let's see, um, did I answer your question already? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did, and you gave us a lot more goodies, so thank you. So generally, uh, like to overview, um, try to get all your vitamins and nutrients from food. And then the ones that you are either lacking in or it's hard to get from food, get it from a reliable source of actual supplement. Yeah, yeah. And generally those, like I could just mention briefly, the ones that I recommend for, uh, for most people would be vitamin D, uh, vitamin B12, uh, and, uh, and uh, a plant-based source of omega-3s, which is like algae or yeast-derived omega-3s, EPA, DHA specifically. And that's because of the reason I, I said is uh, they're hard, they're, they're not reliably found in food. Uh, so it's better to supplement. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. for example, yeah. Thanks. Can you also um, share? I've heard many times when I talk about supplements, um, 
people say, well, my body's just going to get used to him. I don't want my body to be dependent on them. Is that how it works or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, of course, it depends on what they're taking. If they're uh, taking some kind of uh, substance with addictive potential like caffeine, then that could play a role. But uh, when it comes to just, and by the way, that's, that can be added to multivitamins, you know, and uh, um, all kinds, because oh, people wow. don't to read the ingredients on the back, right? And oh, they'll wow. just go based on what the, fr the front, which is just all advertising of the bottle says. Um, they won't even know that there might be something like that uh, hidden uh, or large amounts of, you know, sugar or something. Yeah, so there, there could be things like that. So you have to read the ingredients. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're if you're if you really need that that nutrient, and uh, um, then yeah, you, you should be supplementing is actually a good thing. Um, again, preferably from food. But if you uh, if it's not found in food, like those that I mentioned, or if it's hard, if if you're not willing to change your diet to get it from food, um, then yeah, it might be worthwhile for you to uh, take it for, as a supplement. Okay, gotcha. Um, and then also, is there a difference between, um, this is another one, I think, because there are things that you can take in a, in a um, specific amount of time, like a course. And then I believe that supplements need to be taken just every single day, just like you eat every single day or drink water to fill in the gaps in your nutrition. But to break that, I guess, um, belief or misbelief of I will take them as a course for a month. I'll feel great. Like I personally know people that do this, love them, but the mindset is like, I really need to get, I really need to help them break through that of, of um, that mindset of I'm going to take the supplements for a month. I'm going to feel great going from feeling not so great to feeling great. And then they're going to last me for the next few months and then I'll do it again in the next, you know, in three mm -hmm. months. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I would say it, it depends on also what the, what the, the, the substance is, uh, because if it's something like, um, because I, you know, I, I do use, uh, uh, for example, medicinal herbs uh, to help people, and not all of them can be, have to be taken uh, just uh, indefinitely. There, there's a course of, tr of uh, treatment, and then they can you know, they can uh, go off of that or reduce the dose. It really depends on what it is and what they're taking it for. But there are other uh, nutrients that your body just needs every day. And yeah, it's important just to take these every day. Um, so if you're not getting, uh, you know, like, like, so like, for example, vitamin D, you know, that your, your body does need every day. So you should be uh, taking it every day, either through sunlight exposure or through taking a supplement. Um, you know, but again, sunlight exposure has, uh, uh, you have to be careful with that, not overdo it, of course, because that can damage your skin. Um, and, uh, and, uh, if you don't do this, then your body will just be, um, uh, basically trying to cope with, with a deficiency, which mm -hmm. can lead to, yeah, it can lead to, you know, more down the line, your body can only deal with so much. Now, God has made our bodies really in a remarkable fashion where we're able to adapt to all sorts of stress but uh you know after uh, but uh, nonetheless once the body reaches that breaking point where it can't handle that that deficiency or that stress anymore um that's when you see you know diseases start to emerge uh, like, but it but the, underlying, flag. <laughs> you know, the underlying red flag like you said or this you know this the symptom um the problem was there for a long time it's just that you know it wasn't addressed um uh, and uh yeah it was um because the body uh, was was never uh, because it was never addressed and those nutrients were never supplied, um, you know, uh, then you you at some point you're gonna you're gonna have to face the consequences. So yeah, yeah. it's important to take those those things that your body needs every day, um, you know, uh, every day basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you guys. So we heard it from the doc himself. We had, mm -hmm. supplements are important. Food is food is vital the right type of food supplements fill in the right type of supplements fill in the gaps and what we don't receive in food and daily intake is important <laughs> in order to see an actual um, difference or change in your health um, and then one last thing with uh, nutrition um, can we touch on 
uh, probiotics or pre and probiotics. Um, we love our milk kefir that we make at home with probiotics. I know some um, people just take them in a capsule form, but should we ever take a pause in our daily intake of probiotics? Okay, well, um, there's, uh, yeah, I mean, for, for probiotics specifically, I would also have to ask uh, what's the reason the, the person is taking them. If it's just for general health, um, uh, well, there, I think uh, there, there are benefits to taking high quality probiotics. Um, and there's, there's studies and, and uh, yeah, so there's scientific evidence showing that, for example, they can reduce, uh, they can improve immune function, mm -hmm. reduce, like the duration or severity of, of respiratory infections, um, have some gastrointestinal benefits. Um, so there are benefits to taking them. Um, but um, so a, a few things is that the, the, the benefits only last for as long as you're taking it with probiotics because those organisms are not viable in our own GI tract and our own intestine. They're just kind of passing through. And while they're doing that, they're, they're just giving us some of their uh, nutrients, some of their um, beneficial effects. Um, oh, wow. and, uh, the way to, the way to cultivate a, your, uh, basically a, your, uh, to help your own probiotics and your own GI, GI tract thrive is to is to have a healthy diet, which is rich in prebiotics. Prebiotics, by the way, are the foods that the probiotics, the good bacteria in our gut eat to, um, to uh, uh, be able to multiply and, and thrive and outcompete the, the bad bacteria, basically. Um, and uh, the prebiotics are found uh, basically exclusively in plant foods. Um, there are things like fiber and uh, complex indigestible starches. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's really more important than taking any kind of probiotic supplement because um, it has, it's just indispensable for, for good health. Um, and, uh, but uh, when you look at actually who's actually doing this, um, yeah, 99% of people, according to like scientific evidence, aren't getting enough of these prebiotics in the form of fiber. And uh, uh, that's a shame. So. So that's so doing doing that is going to be the the foundation. If you want to take a probiotic on top of that, um, that that can be that can have some uh, some benefit um, as well. But uh, definitely shouldn't replace uh, this this type of healthy diet. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, so I, I would say it's probiotics. I, I, it, for, in my own profession, like professional practice, I use them. Um, uh, for specific uh, purposes, like for example, after a course of antibiotics, um, or for symptoms with uh, digestive symptoms, for example, um, to help, uh, yeah, to help, uh, to help with that. Um, so uh, I, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with taking them long term, but um, uh, but like yeah, but the, the benefits basically will will remain as long as, as you're taking them. But you know, it, it depends on like kind of your budget and. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of healthy things that we can we can take, for example. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, I you just have to kind of prioritize. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Definitely something I want to dive into more. I think I learned it a little, maybe wrong down the line somewhere. So thank you. <laughs> um, exercise is something we know it really important for healthy lifestyle. But can you explain to us um, what it like? How vital exercise is for our overall well-being? Yeah, it's actually uh, so. It, it, nutrition is um, the most important factor. Actually, when you when you look at the scientific evidence, you you see that uh, poor diet and nutrition is the number one cause of chronic diseases in the U.S. Exercise. Um, for the most part is is number two uh, lack of exercise or sedentary lifestyle uh and uh uh it's uh it, it really is critical to to many organs and systems um so so yeah i mean it <laughs> it's a very essential important part in um uh, in keeping yourself healthy and recovering you know from any kind of uh, health problem um and of course uh you know so you have to individualize this based on 
uh, how much the person can do. You can't do a whole lot at once. It has to be a gradual kind of approach to improving, uh, improving this. Now, so I want to focus on uh, also uh, the type of exercise. The, for, for the leading causes of, of death and disability in the U.S., which is heart disease, cancer, cardio, uh, neuro neurological type diseases, uh, lung diseases, the, the most important type of exercise is aerobic. Um, and uh, the minimum for that is uh, at least half an hour, uh, four to five days a week. Um, now, you can, if, if you do more, that's, that's better. So uh, when the studies looked at those who, for example, exercised an hour versus half an hour, five days a week, uh, they had better overall health um, and uh, many indicators um, of better uh, organ system function like cardiovascular health. Um, an hour and a half was even better than that. And that's as far as they got because there were, <laughs> there were not enough people that did more than yeah. an hour and a half exercise daily to study um, to, to see yeah. if there was a greater benefit beyond an hour and a half daily. Um, yeah. So, so but, but that's, you know, so as far as the science, uh, yeah, the, an hour and a half of exercise um, five days a week or even daily uh, is, um, is like optimal um, right now. More might be better, we just don't know. Um, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> but the goal is, so if I'm understanding correctly, um, it's pretty, the goal is to pretty much get your blood rate up, which then obviously your heart impacts every single or cell and organ of your body, um, right? Yeah, yeah, so, so uh, I, I, that's one of the things I wanted to mention is that you wanna do, um, you wanna do moderately vigorous exercise to increase yeah. your heart rate. Um, so you're gonna you know, start sweating a little bit. Um, so uh, that's important because the, the way exercise works, by the way, in general is um, basically it conditions the body. So it's just like um, uh, basically building up strength over time, like building up endurance over time. Um, and uh, uh, exercise is a type of stress on the body, um, which is beneficial. It's a type of beneficial stress. So um, if you, of course, overdo it, you know, do too much all at once, it's, you might get sick. Uh, it's going to be way too much stress. But uh, if you do it in, you know, in a gradual fashion where the body has time to adapt to that stress and then get stronger as a result, um, it's going to be beneficial for, yeah, for really every organ system, um, for cardiovascular health, pulmonary health. Um, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, so it's just uh, basically, um, uh, so if, if you if you strengthen the, the body basically, uh, you know, in this way, um, exercise has the ability to, <clears throat> to improve um, health gradually over time. Um, there's, so, sorry, there's, uh, uh, the, the key thing to, to kind of remember is that um, your body needs time to adapt to any kind of stressor um, to cope with it. Um, so if there's, um, if, uh, so it's all about kind of the, the amount of stress or the, the yeah. dose, think of it so that way. Mm -hmm. If I could ask you a question, like let's say somebody, um, let's say just like a middle-aged, actually let's say anybody, um, they do not work out, starting half an hour of middle, mid to vigorous uh, workout or exercise or walking, whatever it is, blood pumping, you're sweating, that's a little much. What do you think, I think, um, like I'm just thinking like my mom, my grandma. <laughs> so what is like to be, obviously consistency is key, building up gradually, but what is like the minimum you'd say per day um, that would actually, they would benefit from the minimum amount of time that they should really try at, start out? Yeah, like, you know, for example, I encourage my grandma to, <clears throat> to walk, um, and, you know, if they're, if they're able to walk um, mm -hmm. half an hour uh, every day. Um, and once they, get, once they get comfortable with that, if they can't do that, then you might want, might, of course, you start, you know, at a, at a, a small, set, set smaller uh -huh. goals to begin with. But um, once they're comfortable with that, um, then uh, you you can have them um, either increase the pace, so walk a bit more briskly, moderately vigorous um, exercises when uh, you just get a little bit of a raise in heart rate. Then there's also vigorous exercise, which is um, approaching closer to your max heart rate. Uh -huh. um, so, 
course, you know, someone who's elderly, you're not going to really uh, advise, if they're, if they, if they're if they have a sedentary lifestyle, you're not going to tell them to do vigorous exercise all of a sudden yeah. um, right away. But they can, they can definitely take little steps, you know, start with um, half an hour walk uh, three to four times a week. Um, then, then do it, you know, five times a week, then maybe daily, um, I got you. And, you know, at a slow pace, then increase yeah. the pace of the walk a little bit. So just build it up in little incremental steps. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Okay. Next is sleep and stress. Um, we know that sleep is very vital. We know that stress is bad. Um, that impacts every, I actually used to think if I can just say like this now I think it's funny, but I used to think that when a just a just a normal Western medicine physician would say that, well, we think it's stress that's causing this. I just thought they would say it because they had no idea what else was causing something. With, and until my dad had an issue, which possibly was stress related. Um, so I do now understand how vital um, not staying in the state of stress is. Um, but with sleep, um, is there any like golden rule for sleep? I have a friend that is a go, go getter and she runs on just a little bit amount of sleep. She has a really, really healthy lifestyle, but runs on just a little amount of sleep every single night for a long, like years. Um, you want to address that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so when you look at what the science shows as far as how much sleep we need, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's really around eight hours a day. And um, if you get less than that for a long period of time, it, it can take you know, a toll over time. Um, it's just like uh, uh, basically, you know, that, that stress that's not dealt with. Um, so unlike exercise, it's not a beneficial type of stress where your body gets stronger over time um, and then is able to um, cope with it. Uh, but it's, it actually leads to some some chronic, um, yeah, some chronic impairments. So, um, so you'll I see mean, the side effects somewhere else down the line eventually. Yeah, I mean exactly. So you know, it can like it can contribute to uh, down the line to diseases, uh, things like heart disease. But uh, it's uh, it's very it's actually quite common to see in, in this you know day and age because of, of the hectic lifestyles a lot of people lead um the the busyness so um you do what you can to uh the, the two the two key things to focus on are the, the duration and quality of sleep because yeah. even if you get that eight hours if uh if it's poor quality sleep or it's interrupted it's not yeah. gonna do it gonna do much good so um yeah. so uh another thing to to note is that um, really the most restorative type of sleep is really only found uh, obtained in the first third of the night. Um, that's the delta wave sleep that's really important for uh, for uh, kind of your body to restore, re repair all these uh, all these processes that have um, that need daily maintenance, um, detoxification for for forming you know new new synapses in the brain for uh, um, yeah, restoring any, any damaged tissues, things like that. So, um, so between, uh, like usually, uh, around 10 to 1 AM is, uh, is, is critical, uh, sleep, sleep time. Um, That's and, actually really, really helpful to know. Sorry to interrupt, but as a mom, like, and I'm done past that stage, but I remember waking up for like a year, every single night, every few hours. And then I got to the point where I was, so, I, I mean, then this was my, with my fourth child, but I finally started realizing that I was like agitated all the time. I was just on the edge of my nerve every day and just exhausted past, past myself. And then I started put, you know, the root cause I'm like, it's because my duration is so it's not long. I mean, it's long, but it's continuously broken up. So like for a mom, like, I don't know, would you recommend like somebody that is waking up to their child all night long, maybe having, you know, the dad or whoever is with her, give her that quality sleep for the first 
third, so 10 to one or around that time of like totally uninterrupted. If the baby needs anything, they go to the baby at that time. And then the rest of the night, mom could take over and, and do her thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, that would be the, the kind of the least, I guess. I mean, you know, of course, it, every situation is different. But yeah, that would be very helpful, you know, for the mom to have that uninterrupted sleep in the first third of the night, that delta uh, restorative sleep. Um, that's going to be help, just um, important health-wise, um, you know, and if there's, <clears throat> yeah, if there's like, of course, you know, it's understandable that the baby's going to cry and someone has to get up. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, so that, that just has to be worked out. But um, for, yeah, I mean, so if you had to choose basically when to be awake, and it's better to be awake basically uh, after the, the first third of the night. Yeah. So yes. Can, yeah. If, it's, if there's like no choice, rather, yeah. Okay. That's cool. I wish I would have that, known that. Okay. And the last thing um, that's important to our overall wellness is the toxic load on our bodies. Um, uh, I mean, there's a myth that, you know, and I used to believe it that this whole green non-toxic is just branding and um, business. But now I understand um, how much toxins really harm our cells. And then we see the after effects of that of different either health concerns or mysteries or, or diagnoses. Um, and, and even maybe to take it a step further, there was a question on here earlier, like could natural medicine be used to, um, I think she said to treat cancer. Let me find it. Should, she said, should you treat cancer patients with natural medicine? So, um, kind of two questions in one, but I feel like they relate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so the toxicity that uh, people encounter every day, um, the number one source of that is just what they eat every day. Because <clears throat> when, uh, when industrial pollutants basically are produced and there's a huge amount of them in the environment, and then, uh, uh, you know, animals go out and... Uh, graze and uh you know and then the other animals eat those animals those industrial pollutants actually build up the food chain so at the bottom of the food chain we have the plants which have the lowest contamination and then as you go up the food chain the higher you go the more pollutants the more toxins there are um, wow. a lot of them are fat soluble they accumulate in animal fat so for example that's why eating a large fish like a tuna or a swordfish you know shark um, that has more uh, concentrated more, uh, more hi higher amounts of things like industrial pollutants, uh, heavy metals, various wow. other things than, than smaller animals. Um, but yeah, I mean, but so, so our diet and really, um, animal sources are the chief cause of the toxins we encounter every day. Um, and, uh, there's, there's a smaller amount from other environmental contributions, which are, um, but we have a, a we, we don't have as much control over that over uh, as we do over our diet. We can't control um, what we eat every day, you know, but uh, we may not be able to control like, let's say what's in our, in our immediate environment, but that's okay. Because uh, like I said, the diet is the most important source of these pollutants. Um, so if you, if you uh, actually are willing to um, eat a cleaner diet, a uh, whole food plant-based diet, um, then you're going to dramatically uh, reduce your toxic load. Those foods will also help you detoxify those very same toxins because they're critical for the detoxification processes um, and organs of elimination like our kidneys, uh, liver, uh, skin, lungs, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's like, a, you know, you get multiple benefits just by eating a healthy diet. Um, uh, as far as cancer is concerned, um, yeah, that's a very uh, individual, uh, basically, it would, it would be, so you can, you definitely uh, should, uh, with, with cancer there, with, uh, with, yeah, with cancer patients, um, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, and oftentimes you can do uh, basically adjunctive therapy. So in addition to the Western uh, type uh, uh, medications like chemotherapy. Uh, you can also, uh, for example, you know, eat a healthy diet, which will help in all in all sorts of ways. Uh, so it's not it's definitely not either or. Um, 
it, it should be looked at more like, uh, you know, you can do as much as possible to support the body. Um, mm -hmm. But every case is specific, every cancer is specific. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you have to really, uh, that would be a very patient specific question. You would have to know a lot of details about what type of cancer, mm -hmm. um, what are the conditions they have. It's not, it's not possible to give a blanket answer to that. Um, okay. just yeah. general, because, um, again, you know, depending on what type of, let's say chemotherapy they're getting, um, you know, it might respond like certain herbs would be okay. Others may not be. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, there's certain foods that may be helpful. Others may not be helpful, you know, so. Yeah. It's so cool. I think like just to even summarize like all of the, the four topics we talked about, nutrition, exercise, sleep, stress, and the toxic load. When we like our bodies are so divinely designed that they could do a lot on their own if they don't have, if they're well taken care of. So if they don't have the toxins in the way, if they're fueled with the right types of nutrients, if they're, um, getting enough rest and so forth. So, wow. So cool. Um, so I have a couple other questions, just, um, specific ones that, um, um, other users on Instagram or people asked if you could just address from the doctor's standpoint of view. I, I get this just like, um, overall, um, advice, but somebody, so a teen struggling with acne, where should they start to figure out what the root cause is and how to treat that? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> okay. So a lot of, uh, a lot of that, um, you have to, of course, you know, having, having a, a, a healthcare professional knowledgeable in this would, would, would be very helpful because mm -hmm. with every specific condition, there's, there's details that are important to know. But I'll just tell you some of the studies, for example, and uh, some of the, um, yes, yeah, so, so basically scientifically proven things that, that can help with, with things like acne. Uh, first, we know that um, our food definitely can, can uh, contribute to acne, the type of food we eat. Um, so <clears throat> so uh, they can, you know, for example, exacerbate uh, hormonal type uh, uh, acne formation. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you eliminate they type, that type of food, for example, uh, the studies show that eliminating dairy um, and uh, uh, other, other um, uh, animal type foods um, can, can really help with re reducing the number of, yeah, the amount of acne. Um, so, uh, there's um when it comes to as far as like what's causing it um there's the pathophysiolo the physiology basically uh, involves um involves uh hormonal signaling um you know during for example puberty um it also involves inflammation and then these opportunistic uh pathogens or bacteria that live on the skin um so you, so Sorry to uh, to address that you'd have to uh, clamp down on inflammation. Basically, you'd have to ad address um, the inflammatory cascade, and uh, uh, you'd have to um, uh, prevent uh, contamination at at the skin surface with these bacteria uh, in general, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you'd have to um, just make sure that the, the organs responsible for uh, metabolism of hormones are are healthy, like the liver, which, mm -hmm. for example, metabolizes uh, various sex hormones like estradiol. Um, so, uh, when I when I have a patient with acne, um, we uh, yeah, even the I mean, the first thing is you know we talk about of course a healthy diet and what foods to include, what foods to exclude. Um, we talk about um, uh, also. Uh, there's there's things that that can be used topically, for example, um, that uh, uh, are natural substances. There are also there's also like uh, drug type cleansers that can be used yeah. on this that um, have have shown some uh, some reductions. Um, but when, when the natural uh, treatments, for example, like tea tree oil and uh, um, 
and uh, green tea lotion, yeah, that has been studied and compared with these treatments. They um, they seem to do just as well or better. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if you, I, I actually, uh, if you like, I can I can uh, uh, quickly like look at the type of topical treatments which which were found to be helpful. But um, I'm just trying to kind of give a general. Yeah, um, I think I got like the four from what you're saying. I got down four main things to look at. So let's say somebody, you know, somebody has a teenage daughter or even maybe somebody watching has is his, is struggling with acne or knows somebody that is and they're trying to help them. So the things to consider are the obviously the nutrition. So the food that you're eating and um, possibly eliminating or putting on hold the things that are hormonal. Um, and then, um, reducing inflammation. So I know, I know for like turmeric is super anti-inflammatory, um, and other things that you could take, um, or even foods that you can avoid that cause inflammation. Um, and then, go ahead. Well, I, I use also specific medicinal herbs, um, that are, uh, target these, uh, these pathways, for example, um, there's herb, there's a class of herbs called blood purifiers, depuratives that mm -hmm. help to eliminate um, toxins from the body. They help uh, to cleanse the skin in particular, um, and um, they help to reduce inflama yeah, inflammation. Uh, so you mm -hmm. want to address that, um, and uh, also uh, want to uh, make sure there's a good uh, there's a healthy uh, bacterial kind of environment on, on the skin. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you, would, yeah, you would look at prebiotics like the, such as the ones found in food um, and various therapeutic foods um, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, burdock root and, uh, and um, chicory. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, then you'd um, also just take care of the skin uh, physically. So um, using something like um, uh, a, a tea ointment, a, a green tea ointment, or uh, for example, tea tree oil, or mm -hmm. a number of other topical um, uh, natural uh, products can can be helpful too. That's what yeah, I, that's I love my tea tree oil when I have acne, but then I definitely see and pinpoint where that stems from. So eliminating that mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely helps, and doesn't even, I don't even need my tea tree then. Um, um, thank you for all of that information. Um, I mentioned also that the beauty kind of integrative medicine is that when you combine all these approaches together, it's not just one thing you're doing, right? You're doing, mm -hmm. you're taking care of, of the problem, um, on a systemic level, also on a localized level. So you're, so when yeah. you combine diet, um, you know, exercise, uh, these, uh, medicinal herbs, for example, um, and other helpful lifestyle changes, the, the benefit is, is uh, synergistically or dramatically better than, um, than just doing one thing by itself. Um, and that's what really gets you those amazing results. Um, so for example, you know, I mentioned before that like, if you overdo exercise, you can get sick. There's actually a J-shaped curve uh, where, you know, you can do it. So the, the, uh, a certain amount of exercise, depending on your fitness, will, will be very healthy for you. And then if you go beyond that, your immune system suffers because there's too much stress to endure all at once. But if wow. you combine it with healthy foods like blueberries or white button mushrooms, and they did studies like this in athletes, you can actually um, abolish that, those negative effects because the body has been better able to cope with that additional stress. You're actually... Um, wow. So those athletes didn't get sick, you know, that, that were, were actually eating those blueberries, those mushrooms or other type, type uh, other, uh, other foods like that. Um, and so, so that, that just shows you that the synergy between these uh, integrative, between these approaches, basically that um, the body in, in multiple ways is, is nourished and, and restored. And so the effect of that is greater than the sum of its parts. So you, you can see mm -hmm. uh, results that, you know, are like unbelievable. In like, I had a patient that, had, you know, recently that had un results that her gynecologist wouldn't believe um, because she never saw anything like that. <laughs> it's wow. really, that's really the power of, of uh, yeah, combining uh, multiple lifestyle therapies yeah. um, 
and uh, prayer, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. I think it's something that, like, if this is intriguing, you start kind of, first of all, for me, it was like surrounding myself with people that think this way and kind of learning from them, reading up a little bit more. But then when you start trying to um, make these different lifestyle changes and you learn to listen to your body, um, it's like so intriguing and so <laughs> it's, I, I want to say addicting, but it really is like this wellness lifestyle is just, it's a well, you just continuously learn, you see results, you're like, Oh my gosh, okay, so if I do this, what's going to happen? Let's try this. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, we actually have more questions. But for the sake of time, I will not go through them. But things like high blood pressure, which is a very common thing, joint pain, eczema, um, allergies, and so forth. I'm going to leave it to you guys that ask those questions to reach out to Dr. Davidson. He actually does virtual consults. Um, and he has an Instagram page. It's linked here. And I'll also just uh, put it in the description. Um, for those of you in California, go see him. Um, and this was definitely an eye opener for me on some areas and a, um, uh, a yes and amen on some things that I knew. <laughs> So thank you so much for your time. Is there anything you'd like to share before we conclude? Uh, it was my pleasure. Um, I hope this was helpful for the audience. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I would say, you know, if there's, if there's one thing that you can do differently, um, like that will have the most dramatic impact on your health, um, you should definitely start with, with nutrition. Um, uh, because uh, it's just so much, such a huge body of evidence now showing the links between uh, diet and disease. Um, yeah. There's some good resources I, I recommend for my patients. Um, so they don't take my word for it. They, they can learn from themselves. I encourage everyone, you know, don't, don't believe because, you know, don't believe the doctors online. 99% of the information online is misleading, false. It has to do with money. It has to do with who's benefiting mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you have to look at the primary literature, the, the actual scientific studies. Um, and it's really hard to, if you're not an expert in that, you know, to, and it takes so, a lot of time as well. So I give, I'm going to give the audience a few good sources of credible information, uh, scientific information. They can go in and find answers for themselves um, regarding nutrition and, and uh, leading a healthy lifestyle. So uh, number one is nutritionfacts.org. Um, and that's actually um, a charity organization. It's led by a doctor who uh, spends all his time looking through the medical library and through catching up on science, which, you know, I mean, it's really uh, difficult to do because um, there's hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands, actually, of, of new articles published every year. So for one person to go through that, it's, it's a, um, you know, by the time you're done with medical school, they say you're 20 years behind because of how much research has been <laughs> conducted. Oh, wow. wow. So there's constantly new studies coming out. Um, but I mean, it's not like the, 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 our conclusions change. Our conclusions about what makes a, a healthy diet, you know, is, uh, is, is the same. There's a huge amount of, of uh, mm -hmm. evidence now showing that a whole plant-based diet, you know, is the, the healthiest, uh, basically. Um, so yeah, anyway, so the, the nutritionfacts.org, um, there's um, a couple of good books um, that I would recommend. Uh, one is called The China Study, which uh, ba basically it's a compilation of studies looking at the links between diet and disease. Uh, that's by uh, Colin Campbell. Um, and then another one is How Not to Die by, by Dr. Michael Greger, and that's the same person who, who leads the nutritionfacts.org um, website. Uh, and um, if they like, they can go on my website, uh, drmdavidson.com. There's an education section where I, I put these credible uh, resources um, that are scientifically based so they don't have to just uh, Google the information because Dr. Google, unfortunately, most of the time is wrong when it comes to health information. Dr. Google, um, I love it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. It's, you know, it's good to have uh, to know where to go to find um, credible credible information basically yeah. because the, that's a huge challenge is uh, the mm -hmm. amount of misleading information you know that's uh, around now oh. there's so many myths you know regarding nutrition yeah. that we can do a whole talk you know a whole like series of talks just about the myths on, on the internet about health and nutrition oh, wow. <laughs> wow. i hope that was helpful for everyone yeah, i'll uh, add it to the description down below for sure 
Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Likewise. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Take care. Bye.